If you wanna know how to do 50 plus deals per year for free, you're not gonna to wanna to skip a single second of this video. Today, I'm bringing on a rock star, a heavy hitter, Brandon Mulrennan, who he himself does well over 100 deals per year for multiple years and has been able to show agents exactly how to leverage this free outbound lead generation strategy in order to crush it every single year. Now, you're not gonna to wanna to skip a single thing and also stay to the end for a couple reasons. Number one, Brandon's gonna be breaking down down his script of how he approaches FISBOs and expireds. He breaks down the exact math so that you can actually calculate and reverse engineer to guarantee that you do that volume every single year. And he's gonna talk about his follow-up plan and even shows exactly what he brings to these appointments and sends them in order to convert at an astronomical rate. And then one little secret is at the end of this video, we dive into some golden nuggets that I've never seen anybody else share. So this is jam packed with actionable tactical value. And if you watch this video start to finish, you'll be able to take action today in order to start to skyrocket your business for free, leveraging Brandon's incredible strategy. So before diving into it, two quick things. Number one, I'm going to link all of Brandon's contact information and profiles below. He's got an incredible YouTube channel that is one of the most valuable in the industry, jam packed with value, and he's posting insanely consistently. So it's a wealth of knowledge for free and his profiles are incredible. And the second thing is I'll be linking his reverse selling program down below because he's a coach to multiple thousands of agents every single year and he's been helping them crush it like we're going to do in this video. So check that stuff out. But before you do, make sure you stay tuned and get ready to take a ton of notes because we do talk about some foundational stuff in the beginning but once we get into it get ready to have your mind blown so let's bring on brandon and show you how to do 50 or more deals per year for free what's going on guys so we have an absolute rock star on today i'm super excited for this one um you know a lot of people know that with my business we talk way of approaching things and today we've got on a guy that is a sales expert and he's absolutely been crushing it you know uh we brought on brandon mulrennan today and he came from being a top listing agent at kw now he's his own brokerage you know he's been able to build it up to 250 agents doing over 700 million in production last year uh and trains with his incredible reverse selling program over 2,000 agents every single year. And this is one that I'm really excited about because we all see the market shifting. And when we see the market shifting, a lot of agents are starting to say, well, I don't have a lot of money. How do I go about getting clients when I don't have much to spend? And I get it because I've been there. So Brandon's going to be breaking down his unpaid outbound lead gen strategies of what you can do in order to take a really innovative approach to getting clients coming to you. So Brandon, what's going on, man? Super excited to have you here. Yeah, dude, listen, I appreciate it. Uh, I think this was just uh, a matter of time before you and I did some work together. And so it's uh, it's an honor to be here. And like I was telling you off air, my goal is to provide the audience with as much tangible value from the interview as possible today. I love that. And I think that's, you know, something is, that's near and dear to my heart. Why I think we're going to do well together because all too often you see interviews and you have to go buy something or invest into something just to get something actionable out of it. But I know, you know, from watching your content, which, you know, again, guys, I'm going to be uh, linking all the Brandon's content below. Uh, you have to check out his channel. It's absolutely incredible, tactical to the point business changing. So um, this is going to be exactly that. And I'm excited to dive into this because this is something that I know is going to completely change the trajectory of so many agents businesses. Yeah, dude, for sure. And I think uh, like we were saying off air, and we'll unpack this for sure, Mike, is that I think a lot of the things that we the way in which we approach this business, although maybe different, the unlike the underlining principles will be the same. So to bring your audience maybe a different view on the business, I think will be very, very helpful. Of course, of course. And, and this is cool because, you know, just looking at, I think one of the things I love so much about what you do, Brain, is you just think differently. Like a lot of the stuff that you share in your channel, and I know a lot of the stuff we're going to get into today about prospecting and, you know, how to approach this. It's, it seems so obvious once you hear it, but it's one of those things that if you don't hear it, you probably won't even think about it. And that's what's really cool is I love that your strategies 
are something that a new agent can introduce. It's not like you have to have this big sphere, this following or this experience. This is stuff that as a newbie, you can implement today and start to see tangible outcome and, and tactical results from. So I'm excited to dive in. Yeah, let's, let's rock and roll. So if you want, Mike, uh, and that is exactly right, by the way. And so, yeah, if you want, I can kind of walk people through uh, how I see lead generation, um, to your point, starting with a brand new agent, and I coach to six phases of lead generation that I think will be of great value to the audience. And if you want, we can jump right into it. Yeah, let's go. That's uh, lead gen is is always the hottest topic, but I think as you and I are going to resonate, it's it's not necessarily about leads, it's about conversations. And I know you're the master at exciting real conversations, because if you have 100 leads or 1000 leads, and none of them turn into actual what we're doing here, you don't have a business. But if you can start to convert and open up that dialogue, you'll never have to worry about where your next deal is coming from. Yeah, spot on. And I couldn't agree more. I think, uh, well, well, yeah, that is exactly right. I mean, leads are no longer the issue. Yep. Conversion is the problem. And it's because of a lot of different reasons, mindset, skill set, uh, focus, strategy, tactics, consistency. And so uh, the way that I look at this, Mike, is this. I, I believe that there are only six ways to generate leads or listings or buyers in real estate sales. Number one, and what I call uh, our phase one, is our unpaid or free outbound approach. And we'll talk about that in great detail in just a second. This is where an agent can build some cash flow as they're building their business because it's very, they are absolutely in control. Yeah. They can predict the outcome and it's very, very profitable. The margins in upwards of 95% margin. And so any business owner, when you hear margins that high, it's like, wait a minute. Yeah. That's pretty lucrative. That's pretty sexy. Let me pay attention to that for a second. So we'll, we'll unpack it more. Uh, phase two is what I call paid outbound. So going out there and doing Google pay per click as an example, whether that be on the buy side or the seller side, we can uh, get and build our own list to which we can prospect that list with outbound phone calls, emails, text messages, things of that nature. Then we get into our phase three, which is typically an agent's mic, you know, their years two, three, and plus really focusing on their client database, yeah. building a sales practice. And I think this is where a lot of agents are missing the boat. They're not looking at this long-term. We are all addicted to instant gratification yeah. where we need to focus on our business the same way, Mike, a CPA would, or an insurance agent would, where we're building a book of business and if we can focus on the relationships with inside of that database, well, the goal one day is to never worry about lead generation, whether it's paid or unpaid because of the database. And we call that phase three. Phase four is a business model that I think all too often the industry is missing. And that is uh, creating a B to B business model through referral partners. Every realtor that will ever listen to this will get this. And for the most part, we are on the receiving end of another industry's B2B business model. As an example, how many phone calls do we get, Mike, from loan officers and title yeah. reps and home warranty people? And uh, uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. And we say, well, wait a minute. Why is that the case? Well, obviously, it's because we are dealing with the consumer that they also serve. Well, what if we did that same thing? Who are the industries that are working with the, the buyers and the sellers in which we will also serve? And you start to come up with answers like divorce attorneys, probate attorneys, mm -hmm. CPAs, financial planners, assisted living sales managers, all of these uh, people that are working with people that have to buy and sell real estate that have to at some point make an introduction to a realtor through the work in which they do. So it only makes sense, Mike, for guys like you and I, whether man or woman, whatever, to build relationships with other industries. So yeah. we call that phase four. Then we get into phase five, which is an unpaid inbound approach. And people don't know me for this, but we're talking about content. Yeah. How to go out there and build content that attracts clients in. Very difficult, takes a long time. Uh, everyone 
thinks that's the sexy thing, build a brand, it just takes time. And that's why we have that as phase five. And then lastly is, is phase six, where this is a paid inbound approach. So uh, this could be things like TV or radio, where we're paying a lot of money to get this little bad boy to ring. So those are my six phases of lead generation that I coach and I train to that have served me over the last uh, almost 20 years. I think that's amazing. And, and there's a lot of parallels I want to draw there because, you know, one of the things that I hear all the time, because now people see me just putting out content and, and I'm kind of doing what I'm doing. And a lot of people just want to jump straight to that. And I love that you have that as phase five, because, you know, one of the things that most people forget is that I door knocked every single day, three hours a day, seven days a week in the snow, you know, for my first six months, because what most people fail to, to understand is that as you're alluding to, we're in this instant gratification society, but that's not what content is. It's delayed. So it's almost like an exponential curve where you're not going to see anything for like six months and then it's going to hit an inflection point and then you'll start getting those calls. But most people don't have six months to wait to get their next deal. So you need to offset that by phase one that we're going to dive into, which is, you know, what can you actually take control over today to actually build your business right now with instant opportunities, not having to wait for the momentum to build on the delayed. And that's where a lot of people fall short, especially the newer agents that are chasing that shiny, sexy penny and not willing to do the trench work that actually takes to get to the point where you've even earned the right to do that. Yeah. And that is exactly right. Um, well said. And, and the issue with that is this, as you uh, work your way phase by phase by phase, the, uh, the higher phase you get, the sexier the thing becomes, which then attracts everybody to want to go and skip yeah. over phases. And the earlier phases, the more foundational things, the more difficult, challenging, however, the more predictable uh, and the more profitable they are. So Definitely. the reason why we have these built this way is build profit first, and then we can use the money that we're making on the unsexy, very difficult, very hard. Uh, and then we can put that money back into the business as we start to scale it. And here's the key thing over time. Yes. And to your point, all the agents want to skip phase one, two, three, four. They just want the sexy branding. Listen, yeah. Mike, I just want to be Ryan Surhand and be on HGTV yeah. and drive the Ferrari and get all the stuff. What do you mean? I just got my license last night. Well, where, yeah. where is all that stuff? So it just doesn't work that way. So uh, the reason why I've spent uh, probably the last five or six years and people know me as the unpaid outbound guy is because I know the foundation that it creates for an agent, regardless of what they end up getting to long term. And what are we talking about? Practically speaking, we are talking, Mike, about specific abilities to communicate to people we know, and to people that we don't know, in a way where value is being perceived at such high, uh, 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 such a high point, where the prospects can do nothing but be attracted to want to do business with us so that we can go out and serve these people at the highest level without spending money, without putting the credit card out. And so as an example of that, this is why I always say prospecting is not cold calling. And here's what I mean. To your point with door knocking or, or, or whatever direct outbound approach you're gonna take, well, we know there are people in the marketplace without doing anything that have their hands in the sky and in nature, we call this natural selection. And so we can use that from nature and pull this into the real estate business. As an example, we can go, I was just had a coaching call with one of my clients before this. He has taken 12 listings in the last 19 days, spending $0 going after expired listings, right? Because the market is shifting and every market uh, is getting a lot more expired because agents, to your point earlier, are pricing property off of old data, right? They're not experienced enough yet to price property, get them sold. And so these are very sellable properties with very motivated sellers that had the wrong agent. As another example for sale by owners, right? People that are uh, trying to sell the properties on their own, market shifting, a lot less of them are becoming successful. Our services become more appealing. Yes. For rent by owners, absentee owners, probates, people going through a divorce, all these people, we already know, Mike, you and I, they have to sell a home 
before we decide to even pick up the phone, send them a text, send them a message on Instagram, knock on their door. This is what I'm talking about when I talk about unpaid outbound lead generation. It is up to us and our mindset and our skill set to go out there and generate conversations, which people in our industry just cannot accept. <laughs> It's too difficult. I'm too uncomfortable, Mike. I just don't want to do that type of work. Is there something a little easier, a little path of least resistance? And that is what we're talking about. It's it's incredible, man. And and you know, I love that you're kind of alluding to the fact that like as the shifting market happens, because I got started in 2017 and in Calgary, we lost a hundred thousand jobs and 27% of homes were selling. So 14 months of inventory, like it was chaos, but I loved it because I knew that this was an opportunity to do what other agents aren't willing to do that are lazy, complacent, not willing to get outside of their comfort zone. This is the best time to take market share from all the agents that rode the gravy train for two years. They're not going to be licensed next year. Where are their clients going to go? They're going to go to you if you follow Brandon's strategies and start to really get in front of people at scale. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. And, you know, to, to go deeper on why people, uh, they, it, here's the thing. I'm not saying anything new. It's not that people on this podcast or, or this YouTube says, I've never heard of calling an expired listing. It's just that they don't know how, yeah. or they have a negative connotation towards it because they feel salesy or pushy uh, or whatever the case may be. Well, when you come from a place of service, yeah. And we, that's exactly what we teach our coaching clients is how to communicate in a way that is for the consumer's benefit and not our own interest, human beings based on human psychology. That's all we need to learn is how to communicate to the limbic system, which is responsible for all decision-making. Once we understand how to do that, then prospects say, thank you so much for calling I've got every Tom, Dick, and Harry calling me, but you're the only one, Mike, that we'd like to meet with, and thank you for that. And so uh, just to give the audience some context so they're not like, well, can you give us an example, right? Yeah. And so one of the greatest things that keeps salespeople, uh, or rather salespeople that, that have a problem with communicating, uh, coming across as pushy or salesy, which cause people to retract is something called psychological reactance. And so how this works is this, when somebody feels as though their freedom to make their own decisions are at risk is the very moment that they will retract. So the second they feel pressured is the very moment that they no longer want to have an interaction. So rather than forcing conversations, I might open up a conversation with an anti-reactance script. Now I know people don't like scripts. I don't like them either, but we've got to teach people what to say, Mike, so they have confidence to have that conversation. So I say, I might say, Mike, listen, I'm a realtor. Listen, before you hang up, I want to respectfully ask you, would it be okay if I could just ask you one question real quick and getting your permission to have the conversation, right? And so the prospect might say, well, sure, what's up? But just by approaching it in a, in a manner that we know humans respond well to by giving them what Chris Voss calls the illusion of control in his book, Never Split the Difference, we can yeah. lower the reactance, right, by using different skills like that. It's so powerful. And, and I love even just like, I don't even know if people picked up on this because I used to do it at door knocking is the nuance that Brandon said there about, you know, if I just take a second to ask you this, because a lot of people are worried about the time delay. So they don't want you to be there for five, 10 minutes. They want to get it done quick because everybody's busy. So if you can kind of break guards down by saying, hey, I just got a quick question. You okay if I ask this, it's only going to take a second. Now that could turn into a 15 minute conversation, but that's not the expectation. And so I found, and I love that you take this approach is it's the subtle nuances and the little things that can make the biggest difference, just based on how people accept that information and what their perception is going to be as they're kind of gathering it. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, and I think once you can understand how to open up a conversation with the prospect where, you know, cause here's the reality, right? We all walk into department stores every single day. And that person says, well, Mike, how can I help you? And we always say, nope, I'm just looking, right? 
uh, we just don't like that feeling. And so if we can approach it in a way that is more permission based, where the prospect doesn't feel any pressure because we're trying to lower that psychological reactance, now they're all more open to having a conversation. Once we do that, then we can use the Socratic method to ask questions to have the person discover that they are the ones that would like to meet with us, not the other way around. As an example, we take this right from neurolinguistics. We can use an if then conditional question based on Mike hypotheticals. So as an example, I might say, well, Mike, with the market shifting, if I could show you a strategy that would cause your property to sell for a great price, then would you be open to at least meeting me? Because let's face it, you're not going to hire me unless you felt as though I could get you a great price. Am I wrong? Yeah. And the person says, well, no, that would be great. Beautiful. What do you think we should do next, Mike? Well, why don't you come over? Great. I'd be happy to meet with you. What day works best for you? And so the prospect, we're just using the Socratic method to have the prospect invite us over. I think that's super cool. And, and I'd love to kind of start diving into that, which is like, you know, a lot of people are looking for like, what do I do just to get started? Like I, you know, Fizbo's expired. Is there any like, um, do you use the Reddit? What kind of systems do you use? And like, you know, for somebody that's looking to get the party started today and they're like, you know what? I understand that this is how I'm going to get to the point of doing 50 plus homes a year. I know this is a time for me to kind of take market share and break out of my shell. What's kind of your recommendations to say, here's a sequential order of like, what should I do today? And then going forward in order to start to kind of build this momentum. Yeah. I mean, I get a lot of pushback uh, when I say unpaid outbound, and then I recommend somebody get the Red X or Vulcan 7 or Mojo. They're yeah. like, wait a minute, that's $150 a month. I'm considering that free. Like if you yeah. don't have a couple hundred bucks a month, you probably are in the wrong business, right? Yeah. Or call me and I'll pay for it for you. You know, like whatever, yeah. like I call that free. However, let's put those aside for a second. Those are some tools that people can use to get for sale by owners and expires. What you can do to, even before that is just set yourself up on a FISBO Zillow alert on your phone for free. And then you can get FISBO data for free and then go print off the expired listings, give that to your title company, they would be glad to run that through their system and give you the contact information in hopes that you're gonna send title business to them, right? So um, those are two ways to get started with those two low hanging fruits, Mike, where people don't literally have to spend any money, but you know, if you could spend 10 bucks a month or something, or uh, a little bit of money, I guess, you could get on a platform like a Vulcan 7 or something like that. I think that's super powerful because that's it's it's important for people to kind of understand that even though there are alternatives, but you, you need to invest into your business. Yeah. Um, and I think the one thing that I always found when I was a new agent and I was broke is that, you know, 100, 150 bucks, 200 bucks a month was actually something to me, but I was willing to do it because I knew that it's one of these things that when you invest into something, you're more committed, just like everybody that goes to free seminars, free this, free that they really struggle to stay committed because there's no skin in the game. But when at least you've got some sort of, you know, the thing that I always like to talk about is every realtor has recurring expenses, but not recurring income. So when you have this expense for a tool, you're a lot more likely to use it to prospect because you know, that's coming out, whether you do a deal or not. So let's point. go get some, do some damn deals. Yeah, that's a great point, right? I mean, we pay attention to what we pay for. Yep. It's great because of loss aversion. Right. And that's a whole nother human psych psychological thing. So anyway, uh, let's keep rocking and rolling. Yeah. So we're, you know, you're doing some crazy volume and you've got some really, really great strategies for that in terms of, you know, your unpaid uh, outbound lead generation. And, and again, you kind of mentioned to me like selling, you know, over 50 homes a year without having to spend money. So why don't we walk people through what that journey looks like in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that there's going to be like a start, a ramp up, and then a scaling phase to that. What does that look like for somebody listening saying, I'm ready to rock. I know this is my time. What do I do? Yeah, uh, and I will give, and I've got some, some notes kind of to outline a plan that people can take away from, uh, from this, this conversation. So to your point, yeah, the expectation is that with any lead generation, uh, and this is another reason why I like unpaid outbound, 
it is the fastest conversion cycle that I have found. And I have test and I do everything, right? So internet leads to content, to outbound, to inbound, everything. I do everything. With this, we can, we can anticipate conversions within 60 to 90 days, all right? So 60 to 90 days of building a sales pipeline so that, so that pipeline starts to manifest and turn into actual listings. So that's the expectation, but let's walk through the plan. Yeah. So I will work our way backwards to listing 50 properties over the next 12 months, Mike, with spending no money on marketing or advertising. So obviously with 50 okay. listings, we have to go meet with some people, right? And so I think a really good place to start for agents that might watch this is to build a business plan based on a 50% met to take in ratio. So if I meet with 100 people, it's very, very reasonable that I would convert half of those into a listing. So that means we have to go and meet with 100 people over the next 12 months, breaks down to eight appointments a month or two a week. That's the first part of the business plan. Well, the next step in the plan, if we need to go and meet with some people, it would then only make sense that we've got to set some appointments with some folks, right? Well, based on averages, all right? And we've measured this for years and years and years. We have a, there's, it's, it's likely that an agent will have a 50% appointment set to appointment kept ratio. So yeah. the agent then, Mike, needs to go out there and set 200 appointments over the course of next uh, next 12 months, all right? It's 16 a month. Well, then the next step in the process as we kind of work down our conversion funnel, if you will, is they have to generate leads. And this is the big, big piece. People are dropping the ball on lead follow-up. The yeah. vast majority of our appointments will come out of lead follow-up, not lead generation. So yeah. what we have to do is as we're having conversations, we're looking at generating a high quality lead. Well, the lead to appointment set ratio, they're going to need about 800 leads over the course of a year that they're going to generate through outbound calls, door knocks, text messages, uh, uh, emails, Instagram messages, Facebook messages. They've got to generate 800 opportunities, which is about 65 a month, breaks down to three per day. That's the goal. Three a day. Well, in order to get three leads a day, we got to talk to some humans. This is where everything, this is where all the agents are dropping the ball. It's like, what do you mean? I actually have to talk to people? Yeah, shocker. Yeah. I know you're in the sales business. Oh shit, I thought I was doing something else. Nope. Yeah. So I got to talk to some humans. How many humans, Brandon, do I have to talk to on a daily basis to get three leads? And by definition, what we consider a lead inside of our coaching organization, Mike, is somebody who has specific motivation that, uh, that, that they uh, want to sell a house. They have specific timelines. They are not committed to another realtor and they have agreed to give you an opportunity to earn their business. Mm -hmm. This is what we de define is as a lead. So in order to get three of those per day, the model that we teach is what we call the daily 30. And this is simply having 30 conversations per day that will generate you three leads to get you to 50 transactions at the end of the year. Now, Brandon, Mike, who do I call? What are the 30 yeah. conversations? So the daily 30 breaks out to uh, like this. So this is for all the analyticals. Uh, this will be for you guys. So we want you to have five conversations with expired listings per day. We want you to have five conversations with for sale by owners. We want you to have five conversations with people in your database. We want you to have five conversations with an, uh, a paid outbound so whether you're doing realtor.com or Zillow or Google PPC, Facebook PPC, five conversations in that bucket of, of leads, five conversations with referral partners, attorneys, CPAs, financial planners, and then five conversations, Mike, within some type of niche. My niche, my favorite is absentee owners. Maybe someone else's probates, maybe someone else's are, are, are elders. Maybe some are downsizers, people that are 70 years or older that have a home that are paid off. That equals 30 conversations. And so the overwhelming thought of 30 conversations a day turns into five. Yeah. I get five conversations, I check it off the box. Five, 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 five. At the end of the day, I've got my three leads. 
right? That turn into, over the course of a year, 800 leads, which then turns into 200 appointments set, 100 listing appointments, 50 listings taken. All free, no marketing budget yet. And as soon as that happens, for most of us, 50 deals might be a couple hundred thousand dollars in income. Yep. I think it's, I think it's so powerful. Like, you know, one thing that I, I just absolutely love about this and, and I, I shout this from the top of a mountain, which is what gets measured gets managed. And a lot of people, you know, I've talked to obviously, you now, one of my good buddies, Joshua Smith, and you talk to any person that has this dialed and they can tell you exactly that all the numbers of conversion ratios to appointments set to listings taken to leads and that like, this is what matters. And, and this is why I tell agents, like if you want to double your business every year, you did 12 deals this year, you want to do 24. The only way you can do that is if you've measured your business this year, so you can see where you've wasted time, where you need to double down. But if you don't measure it, you have no idea what's working and what's not. Now you're going in blind, making assumptions. And we all know what happens when you make assumptions, you're usually wrong. So I love this because it's, it's tactical and it's data driven, but also it gives context to people as to what it actually takes to thrive in this business. And I think a lot of people don't understand that the number one skill you need in order to, you know, do really well in this business is communication, right? 100%. If you, it's, you know, I decimated top producers as a brand new agent in my market, because I was better communicating my value proposition and what I was going to do to help that person versus somebody that just said, I've got 20 years of experience. I'm on all the billboards. You should work with me. But when you can relate to people, when you can understand mirroring and matching energy levels and how to convert and make people feel like they're being taken care of, that communication skill will help you thrive and win listings and take appointments at a higher level. Because I think one thing that you'll probably agree with me with, Brandon, is it's not always what you do, it's how you do it. And this is oh, one thing that I 1, always saw. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, with, I constantly see people with, with you know, coaching calls and things like that. And they say, go make 300 calls a day. And what happens is agents, all they're trying to do is hit their, their KPI of 300 calls a day. But my approach was when I door knock is my KPI is I don't want to get off that damn doorstep until I've done everything humanly possible in my control to get contact information. So yeah. I would do less volume, but the outcome was far superior. It's just like going to the gym. You see some people that look the same as they did last year, but they show up every day. And then you see some people that do 75 hard and they look completely different, right? Yeah. It's, it's always coming down to the intent that you're doing these activities with. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll take that even a step further. And that was so well articulated by the way. Uh, yeah, it isn't what we do. It's all about how we do it. And yeah. furthermore, what I have found to be even more uh, impactful it's how we make people feel. Yes. So much so that I give this analogy. Everyone has a favorite movie and a couple that come to mind for me is the new Top Gun. And I don't know if you're a fan or not, but, but here's what guys like you and, and, and people like us, men or women, we will go watch a movie and we will come out of that movie, Mike, if we like the movie and we'll say, man, that was a great movie. Well, why? Not because of the words, but because of how it made us feel. I've never yeah. once said, Mike, I love that movie because of the words. I really like when he said, no, never. It's because how it made us feel and our jobs and you nailed it. No longer is it a debate on how uh, the best way to generate leads. Who cares? As long as you're having conversations, the whole thing is not about what we do. It's about how we do what we do and how we make people feel that will determine whether we win the business or not, period. 100%. And I think that's, you know, this is a conversation for a whole other video. But one of the things that that I always used in order to win listings was, you know, understanding the six, six basic human needs of, of right. people. And, and when you can understand how to resonate and connect on an emotional level with different people that all have different priorities, whether it be recognition or significance or anything like that, when you can tap into that, now you make them feel like you understand them because people will never remember what you say, but how you feel. So I love that approach, man. Yeah, 100%, 100%. I think, uh, you know, I just think that what, what agents, and I don't know if this is a good place to end or not, we can go as long as you want, but I think for agents that might listen to this, is that regardless of what it is that you're going to decide to do to go out there and generate business is that you a are consistent 
B, keep your head down for a minimum, minimum of six months that you're not chasing every shiny object. And you're saying, you're going to give this two weeks and you're going to give that three weeks. And I'm going to do Facebook ads for one day. And if that doesn't work, then I'm going to knock doors. And if that doesn't work, and I'm going to call Fizbo's. It's never going to work. You have to put your head down and whoever you're taking advice from go all in a minimum of six months, more like 12 months, track everything like a crazy person. And then like a business, a mature business professional, look at the data, 12 months in the game, measure it. Okay. Where do I need to improve? What do I need to do better? Mike, how can I do this better? What do you think about this? And then you can make tweaks, but these agents that are addicted to gratif uh, instant gratification, changing their tactics every two weeks, they got no chance to make it in this industry. No, and, and I see it all the time. And there's going to be two more things I'll ask before we kind of bring it, you know, to a close here. But, you know, I really love that you, you take this approach of, you know, talking about things being long term, because I find the average agent, especially new agents can't think further than either the next deal or the next year. So they're looking in this short term window of saying, if I don't hit this within this amount of time frame, it's not for me. And I see this all the time with people that try on YouTube or Facebook ads or whatever. The one thing I say is if you ever ask me, Mike, how long until I get a client from doing this, I know you were screwed because yeah. I'm going to tell you the average agent gets a client after following my YouTube strategies in three months. You're not going to do that in three months. And now you're going to say, well, I'm on to TikTok or I'm on to this. Yeah. And then you're going to botch that because at the end of the day, I know personally, similar to you, Realtors that make seven figures in GCI a year through cold calling, through door knocking, through networking events, through their sphere, through Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, all of it. But they're the ones that are consistent and say, I'm going to do this because I know it's proven to work if I'm consistent for a long enough time. But the caveat is, is that if I'm also consciously trying to improve over time. Because that's where a lot of people go wrong is they just do the activity, but they're not trying to find the nuances of what are they going to do in order to improve their diligence in that activity for that duration of time. So, you know, the, as we're kind of pulling this together, a couple, I think the two really tactical things people would love is like, what would be your recommendation when having those conversations in the batches of five a day? How do you initiate, let's just say like a FISBO expired conversation. And then what would your recommendation be for like a follow-up plan? Is there a certain cadence? Is there a certain yeah. approach that you do? I think those two tactical things would be a really great way to bring this full circle. Yeah, hundred percent. All right. So let's talk about for sale by owners. All right. Um, and it's, it's really how I built my career um, with outbound with that part of the business. So, when I'm communicating with the for sale by owner, first off, it's the approach. We know that already before we call them that the likelihood of them saying, hooray, I'm so happy a realtor called me, come list my home is next to 0%. And every realtor that hears that would agree with that. Yeah. So because that's true, it doesn't make any sense, Mike, for us necessarily to approach that in a way where we're going to try to say some magical words and change their entire worldview in 30 seconds. It's like trying to, yeah. you know, change a Democrat into a Republican or vice versa in one conversation. Good luck with that. Never going to yeah. happen, right? So we have to do something what I call conversation chunking. And so there's just one step of micro commitments in the selling uh, system where we take one thing at a time. And so that conversation, and we'll chunk it piece by piece. So the first thing that I'm doing when I'm calling a for sale by owner and Tactically speaking, I didn't get them from, from Vulcan 7 or Mojo. I just got it from Zillow. It's free. And I set my phone up on an alert. Speed the lead matters. We need to be the first voice because a first voice with the for sale by owner or any lead for that matter is on the spectrum of things light years ahead if you're the 20th agent to talk to one. So we set up our phone on Zillow. We get an alert. It's, 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 it's Mike uh, from Calgary. He's my for sale by owner. And I reach out to, to Mike as the first voice. And I say, Mike, listen, my name is Brandon. I'm a realtor. Listen, before you hang up, would it be okay if I just ask you a quick question? Mike says, sure. What's up? I'm not working with realtors. I said, oh, I totally get it. I respect the fact that you're selling on your own, Mike. Regardless of what other agents are saying, in this market, you should have no problem selling on your own. My question is this. Are you open to the idea of an agent like myself bringing you a buyer for the property. If the offer, Mike, of course made sense. 
And Mike every time says, well, of course, yeah. we'd be fine to pay a 3%, 4% commission if you brought us a buyer. Beautiful, Mike, let me just ask you. I've got the house here on Zillow, looks gorgeous. Where are you guys off to? Why don't you guys just stay put? Well, the family's growing. We got to leave Calgary. We're going off to Toronto. Got a job transfer. Okay, cool. When do you guys want to be there, ideally? Well, we're thinking about, you know, uh, school just got back in and we want to get there before the holidays. Okay, beautiful. Well, Mike, let me just ask you this before I let you go. Not that this will be the case for you, but if you found yourself in a couple of weeks unsuccessful in finding the buyer willing to pay you what your home is worth, then at that time, would you consider having a conversation with me and looking at some other options? And now Mike says, well, maybe not right now. And I said, yeah, certainly not right now. Uh, at some point in the future, if you can't get the buyer, certainly at that point, you might be open to looking at some other options. Am I right? Mike says, yeah. And I say, okay, cool. Well, why don't I do this? I got no problem with this. When I hang up, I will email you a copy of my for sale by owner backup plan. Take a look at it. If you find value in it, Mike, I'd be happy to meet with you, walk you through what it is that I can do to get your home on the market and get it sold. Because let's face it, the only way you're going to hire a guy like me is if I could put the money in your pocket that you needed, bottom line, even after commissions. Am I right? And Mike says, well, yeah, that'd be the only way. Cool. And I would then generate that opportunity and put them into my follow-up system. So that's conversation one. You want to unpack that at all or that all makes sense? I just, you know, for people that are listening, I... I just want them to really grasp how that was carried out because I think it's so important where, you know, we always talk about questions, control conversations, and you need to load up ammunition with people's pain points to then use a sales loop to bring it back. So you're addressing the things that are specific to them because a lot of people just make statements. They don't ask questions. So now you're just rhyming off whoever's script and you don't know what's important to them. And I think at the end of the day with scripting or with conversations and handling objections, the ultimate goal is just looking at current situation to desired outcome. How can you bridge that gap? And the only way you can identify that gap is through questions. And I love your approach is kind of future pacing the desired outcome. So now there's an emotional tie to it because now they're thinking about it. And when you can start to cater your language to that, it makes it more specific and, and feel like, again, their certain situation is of significance. It's not just another call. Yep, you nailed it. Uh, you you nailed it. Obviously, you are a student of this uh, of sales, which is phenomenal. I didn't know to what extent you are, but you just you and I speak the same language. So yeah, we're totally in lockstep, and we're using hypotheticals to lower their reflex resistance because they don't think the thing is going to occur. They don't know that in four weeks, five weeks, that their whole tune tune changes. So so now we generated generated a lead that we talked about, Mike, earlier in the show. Right? We want two or three of those a day. We put that into the follow-up system. Here's the follow-up system. Every single Monday, I'm going to call that for sale by owner, and I'm going to have a conversation with them about how they're doing during the sale, the, the process of selling on their own, offering to be of service, and a second set of eyes. So I might uh, offer things like doing an open house for them. I might do uh, offer things like making sure they have the proper signage. I might offer things like uh, vetting buyers for them, reviewing some agreements for them, being the second set of eyes, because we know, uh, based on Robert Caldini's work, that the law of reciprocity is the most impactful thing we can do when it comes to influence. So yeah. we're serving the for sale by owner while they believe they don't need a realtor, so that the day when they need a realtor, we are the obvious choice. Right? So we call them every Monday and we're serving, serving them. That's number one. Number two, then what we do is every single uh, Wednesday, we send them a video email. And we do this on a series of weekly emails that outlines our value proposition to serve the for sale by owner that walks them through our backup strategies through video, through email. So we do that. That goes out every single Wednesday. In addition to that, we have a piece of direct mail. We use a company called Mailbox Power. It's like an auto drip direct mail strategy. And we're sending real mail to the prospect's home. Uh, matter of fact, you want me to show you guys? What yeah, that of course. Like? Yeah. All right, hold on. Let me just show your audience. I think they'll like this. Let's see if I can find. Okay, yeah. I love it. And just to, you know, as Brandon's grabbing that, I want you guys to understand. So I actually met Robert Caldini um, a couple yeah. of months ago at the RTA event with Andy Brazil and Emily Led. 
And if you guys haven't checked out his book, Influence, that is life changing because, you know, when when he walks through the nuances of how he's changed copy and dialogue in the smallest ways, even just by sometimes inverting the sequence of how things are said, it is mind blowing how the human mind works when you start to look at these little differences. So I love that you brought him up because that is a, a something that blew my mind when I started hearing what he had to say. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is our, our for sale by owner uh, backup plan uh, mail campaign. And so there's a big piece that goes out like this. And this is the envelope that the prospect sees, right? So we can even put the, the, the prospect's property on the front of this, Mike. So obviously they're going to open up. This is the first mailer. And then over the next couple of weeks, what they're going to get is uh, mailers that are uh, our backup plan outlines the entire backup plan, what it is that we do. And we send one of these every single week for eight weeks. Uh, in addition to our emails, our phone calls, and then we send them a, uh, in addition to that, this is all weekly cadence. We text every for sale by owner that is in our pipeline every Friday before the weekend, offering to be a second set of eyes in the event an offer comes through. Um, and then we may even send them uh, pizza and we, we, we will uh, partner with the local pizza company and have the, the, the delivery boy put a little thank you card and says, hey, best of luck this weekend. Hopefully you get an offer with a $1 scratch off lottery ticket with the pizza playing to that law of reciprocity. So who do you think stands out from all the other agents when we're doing all of this? And then we just convert them through our follow-up system. I think that's amazing, man. And and I love the, that approach. And thank you for showing that with the audience. And I think the last thing, I don't know if this is too much to ask, but you know, what would be, and you don't have to go through the whole follow-up process, but what would be your opening dialogue to an expired? With on follow-up or initial conversation? On initial conversation. If you're going to yeah. prospect an expired yeah, yeah, listing, yeah. what does that dialogue look like to start? Always, always same intro, right? Hey, I know you got every time Dick and Harry calling you uh, before you hang up. Would it be okay if I just asked you one question real quick? And we know that uh, there's a lot of science there and they say, sure. I say, listen, I saw the home had come off the market, was blown away, Mike, because the market's so good. My only question is, are you still open to offers if something made sense? Be honest. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Because I'm getting right to the point to see if this person is open to something that they had wanted the mm -hmm. night before. And so when they give me any favorable to say, yeah, any, anything favorable, I can, I can use that to uncover motivation and then start to get into some more hypothetical uh, 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 conversation that may lead to an appointment now or in the future. Of course. And and then you can look and see the photos were terrible yeah. and the pricing was off and the marketing wasn't there. And and I think it's amazing, man. So um, again, guys, I'm going to make sure that Brandon's uh, content is linked below. You have to check out his YouTube channel because the cadence is amazing. There's new videos seemingly every day. And, uh, and just the value and depth is incredible. So, you know, Brandon, as we bring this to a full close, why don't you just give people, uh, give people a bit of an understanding of what reverse selling is in terms of your program and what you do to, you know, help 2000 agency or absolutely skyrocket their business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no problem. And so you can learn more at reverse selling.com if you guys want, but what, what it is that we do, Mike, is we help an agent build a uh, um, a predictable listing based business primarily is what we focus on because we know that the best buyer leads come as a result of listing property. And so we will help an agent. Really what we are is a, is a sales training organization. We just happen to serve realtors because yeah. that's my, my world, right? And so we will really teach agents how to sell in a way that is not salesy, that is not pushy, that is 100% backed by science and 65 years worth of research. Uh, and it brings various different... Um, strategies from from all of that research in a way that is conducive to have real estate conversations with real people that serve the consumer versus selling the consumer and so we walk them through that piece by piece we we've got a group coaching program and then i just got back into doing one-on-one -on -one work i was out of one-on-one -on -one work for a long time uh, but i am working deeper with like 40 or 50 people um, and i do a lot of intense work with those folks uh, for a long period of time that's awesome, man. And, and again, guys, I'll link that all below. And, and the last thing I'm going to leave you with, and, and just it's something Brandon gave me an idea to talk about. 
and I'll be very quick with this, which is what Brandon's talking about in terms of things that are backed by science, things that are data driven, because what most people get scared about is, is, you know, when you look at fear, right? Fear, when you look at how people approach fear, if they're scared to call, if they're scared to knock, if they're scared to follow up or have these conversations, when you look at like a graph, for example, you've got this line across the bottom, which is risk, and then you've got fear and faith on one side. And the reason why so many people are fearful comes from lack of knowledge. And what happens is when people are fearful, it's because their lack of knowledge that what they say is going to convert, which increases the risk, increasing the fear, decreasing the face so they don't execute. But if you can look at data-driven decisions, you have an increase of knowledge that what you were going to do is proven to work which decreases risk, decreases the fear and increases the faith so you execute, right? And, and to make this in very simple terms for people, this is like, if you're standing on the edge of a cliff and you're thinking, should I jump into this water? Well, you're not gonna do it because you don't know if there's rocks down there, sharks down there, who knows what's down, is it shallow? So that means that your lack of knowledge increases the risk, increases the fear, decreases the faith. But then a five-year-old runs and does a backflip off of it and says, hey, we've been doing this for years. Well, now you've got the knowledge that it's okay, decreases risk, decreases fear, increases faith. So when you look at what Brandon's talking about here, it's all about making sure that you're gathering data-driven, proven, credible knowledge, which is going to give you that faith in what you're doing is actually going to work. And you're not just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. So I absolutely love it, man. That was, I mean, that was great. That was well articulated. And yeah, thanks for having me on. I uh, hope that I deli we delivered on the promise to the audience, which was to provide practical value that people could take away and implement into their business. And this wasn't just an hour long of mental masturbation. Yeah, of course. No, man. It's, it was incredible. And guys, thank you so much. Make sure you check out Brandon's stuff. Uh, he's continuing to put new stuff out all the time and, and definitely check out that website for reverse selling because uh, I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. So thanks so much again, man. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Take care, guys.